Number 33. Use the standard free energy of formation data in Appendix G to determine the free energy change for each of the following reactions, which are run under standard state conditions and at 25 degrees Celsius. And then we have to identify each as either spontaneous or non-spontaneous at these conditions. Okay, so in all of this wording, right, the thing that we have to find is we have to determine the free energy change, right? Free energy change, free energy is Gibbs free energy. That's the full name. So whenever they're talking about free energy, they're talking about Mr. Gibb, who, who came up with this idea, and the variable comes from the scientist's name, Gibbs, so G, right? How, how egotistical. <laughs> I guess that's all scientists. But anyway, we're trying to find a G value. That's Gibbs free energy. Change is that delta, right? We're going to do final minus initial or products minus reactants, which we will see in a little bit. Now, since we want to use our standard energy values from the back of a textbook, in my textbook, it's Appendix G, could be a different, you know, textbook, uh, different appendix for you, but it's standard, right? That means that we're trying to find a delta G notch. Any notch, that degree symbol in the upper right-hand corner for any of your state values, so G and H, um, that just means you're, you know, taking the information from the back of a book. So for this equation, two lithium hydroxides, two LiOH solids plus carbon dioxide gas yields lithium carbonate, Li2CO3 solid plus water in the vapor form. I went to the back of the textbook to find out what those values are. So there you go, right? But now how am I going to find that free energy change? Well, the formula is this right here. If you're just given delta G values, which is all that we have here, I can only use the one formula, which is the sum, that's this little symbol here, the sum, which means addition, the sum of all of the delta G of the products minus the sum, gotta add them up, all of the delta G of the reactants. So in essence, products minus reactants. But now are these values going to remain the same? Well, it goes by the coefficients. That's why they give you the balanced equation. There's a two in front of the LiOH. There's no number in front of the CO2, no number in front of the Li2CO3, and no number in front of the H2O. So let's just fill in those no numbers. Keep in mind that if you don't see a number, that's always just one, right? You have one CO2, one Li2CO3, uh, one H2O. You're going to take that value and multiply your delta G value with it. So negative 441.5 times 2, because the coefficient was a 2. Negative 394.36, I'm just going to show you guys, that would be times by 1, because you have one of them. Negative 1132.19, got to times that one by 1, because there was a 1 in front. And then negative 228.59 for the H2O, got to times up by 1. Now it's all about summing it up. You got to add them up. Literally in the balanced equation, it's LiOH plus CO2. So it's this value plus this value. Same thing for the product side, since you have two different products. There was literally a plus there. So it'd be this plus the other product. So calc time, let's sum up the reactants. So I'm going to go over to my calculator. A handy dandy calcy, I'm going to say 2 times negative 441.5. And you could just, you know, add this in the same thing. It's plus, you could do 1 times, or you could just say plus a negative, or you could just say minus. It all means the same thing. I'll just put a negative, right? Negative 394.36. You could have did it in two steps. You will get the same answer regardless. So for the reactants, seems like it's going to be negative 1,277.36. And now let's just do the same thing for the reactants. So one times, that's the same number, right? Negative 1132.19. And then same thing here. You could say plus a negative. You could say minus. It means all the same thing. 
So in this case, I'll just show you that it's the, you know it's the same. You could just say minus 228.59. Enter that out. There we go. Negative 1360.78. And now here are our values to plug in into our equation. So delta G for your whole entire reaction, RxN reaction, is negative 1360.78 minus your reactants, negative 1277.36. Remember, minus a negative is a positive, but you could input it like this into your calculator and you'll get the same answer. So let's just go for it, right? And in this case, it's gonna be easy because I can just take my answer. So I'm gonna take this answer, that's the first one, minus the negative, there you go, enter, and we get negative 83.42. Your units for delta G is just kilojoules. It's not kilojoules per mole because these coefficients that you multiplied by, those are your mole values. So if you have kilojoules per mole times a mole value, the moles will cancel out, leaving you with just kilojoules. So here is our free energy change in negative 83.42 kilojoules. Now let's see, is this spontaneous or non-spontaneous? This is the information that you gotta memorize. If you have a delta G that's less than zero, that means that it's a negative value. Your reaction is spontaneous. On the flip side, if your delta G is over zero, that means all your positive values, oh, let me just put that there, that means that it's non-spontaneous. Since we have a negative, we know that it is going to be um, a spontaneous reaction. And spontaneous reactions just mean that at you know these standard conditions, you don't need any extra energy from an external source to get this thing running. That's all that spontaneous means. Yeah? Okay. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, tell your friends, tell your classmates. Thank you so much for that. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.